If you're returning to the office this summer, you might be coming back to a chilly welcome. Office temperatures had long been a common gripe among workers and might have an impact on how productive they are. I think you'd be shocked to see how many people take time out of their day to try to adjust their environment so that they can actually focus on their work. This is Robert Bean. He's a fellow and lecturer at ASHRAE, an organization that creates standards for things like temperature and ventilation in buildings. He's also an expert on their standard for creating a workplace climate, which is typically used by offices. Bean will walk us through how the factors they consider need to balance out to get the climate just right, and why throwing off just one factor can leave your office feeling like it's still stuck in winter. When we use air temperature as the sole metric, you know, what's on the thermostat on the wall as our sole proxy for thermal comfort, it's like saying baking soda is a cake. We're missing all of the other ingredients. To figure out how to make a space more comfortable, Ashray looks at a number of factors that can influence the thermal climate. First, environmental factors. Airspeed measures how fast the air moves in a space, while mean radiant temperature looks at the average of the temperatures of different surfaces. And things like air temperature and humidity are also measured. If you think about your own day-to-day -day lives and your thermal experience and you feel drafts and you feel cold floors and you feel the heat coming through the window, which is radiant temperature, not air temperature. And there's many, many ingredients. Environmental factors are combined with two personal factors, which are a little more obvious. One is metabolic rate. That's how fast your body processes energy and you can be hotter or colder depending on how much you move. The other is clothing insulation. If you're wearing light clothes, you'll be colder than someone wearing heavier clothes. And that's the challenge that we have for, you know, indoor environmental consultants is to really understand these people. What are they wearing? What are they doing? How long are they going to be there? And how does the environment around them going to affect their sensation and then ultimately their perception? But to get the personal and environmental factors into balance, Ashray also considers local discomfort factors, which help determine the specifics of what make people uncomfortable. We don't want to have drafts. We don't want to have cold floors, right? We don't want it to be so dry or so humid. They'll tell you what you want, but more importantly, they'll tell you what they don't want. Bean says one source of discomfort is when surfaces are different temperatures, which is called radiant asymmetry. That's what happens if you're sitting next to a window and one arm gets warmer than the other. Another is draft, which mostly affects the parts of your body that aren't covered by clothes. Like that skin on your ankle where your pants don't quite meet your shoe. When that ankle is colder than, say, your head, that's called vertical air temperature, another factor ASHRAE tries to measure. We want to be able to create a space using architecture, enclosure design, interior design, and mechanical systems to create these boundary conditions that are diverse but they allow people to experience the space without stress. That's the end goal. So that's what ASHRAE takes into account. But if there's so much thought put into your workplace climate, then why can your office still feel so cold? It's really like a domino effect. So we know that in buildings, for example, that have a lot of glass, the mean rating temperature is going to go up because the sunlight is heating up all that glass. So what people do is they crank the air temperature down. So they're trying to balance that out. For many buildings, overcompensating with the AC might be the reason you feel too cold. A 2009 study of 95 office buildings found that most set the thermostat colder than guidelines suggest. There isn't an across-the-board reason the AC gets turned too low. But researchers from Center for the Built Environment say that poorly designed or maintained units could be part of the problem. But beyond the AC, changes in any factor can make you feel colder. Not moving around, sitting too close to a vent, or wearing clothes that are too light. Some studies also suggest that thermostat settings may be skewed toward men's preferences, who tend to wear longer, heavier layers in the office and can have a naturally faster metabolic rate. We know that it's impossible to make everybody happy. What the standard can do when it's properly applied is that we can create conditions so that the majority of people would be satisfied. Some experts say that turning the thermostat up a few degrees 
and allowing people to adapt their spaces to suit their own comfort is one solution to cold offices. As soon as you're able to adapt, then you will be able to see that the temperature doesn't need to be at such a low value that it can allow to climb up. Things like providing personal fans at desks can allow buildings to keep the office warmer without sacrificing comfort. An annual program in Japan loosens up dress codes so workers can wear lighter clothes into the office to help reduce the need for air conditioning. But if changing your office thermostat isn't an option, you can try asking to move to a different seat. You might be more comfortable next to a window where the radiant temperature is warmer or in a spot with lower airflow away from a vent. And if all else fails, it's not a bad idea to keep that extra sweater at your desk.